challenging. And that's really important when refereeing. If you feel like you're stuck in the middle of the park, always think. What is up everyone and welcome back to another Ref6 weekly vlog. As you can see, we're in a different location this week, but that will all be revealed in a different vlog. This week's vlog is very different, so I picked up this game late on the Thursday. But we've also been suffering with frozen pitches in England, so it's all about how I adapt my training for the week. Following that, we look at the analysis tool and going through my games and how I can find little bits and little wins to improve my game. But for enough of that, I will see you Thursday. Good evening. So it is 6.40 on a Thursday evening and I've just come back for a, from a 5k run and I have just been appointed to a game for Saturday. So it is Lansing versus Seven Oaks. I'm just like a Premier League referee, game on the Saturday, then fourth man duties on a Sunday. Um, so now it's terms of I wasn't going to do a speed session tomorrow. So now it's into a speed session um, and preparing for game day Saturday. So it's all a bit weird. It's all a bit sort of new and fresh. Um, I've had a lot of games called off. I was, wasn't expecting to referee till February. Now we're back into it and we're being observed as well. So it's all very new. It's all very fresh. I've now got to deal with assistance, getting in touch with the club and getting in touch with the observer all before Saturday. So it's going to be a mad 48 hours. But now we go into game day and routine, speed session on the Friday and prepare for the game or no alcohol on the Friday and prepare for Saturday. So let's get this show on the road. Okay, good morning. So it is 7.30 in the morning and we came down to do a pitch session, early doors, it's freezing cold and we found the pitch to be solid. So what we're going to have to do is adapt quickly to still get our session in and we're going to go and do it in the gym instead. You can find all the sessions that we do, pitch sessions, treadmill sessions for adapting quickly down in our description. Uh, just follow the link where it says fitness and it will take you to that page where you can download our fitness plans because it's all about adapting now. Um, obviously, match day minus one, we want to get that speed session in. I want to get it done 24 hours before I have the game. But unfortunately, we can't do it on the pitch because it's rock solid. So, to the gym. Good morning. So, it is 9.45 in the morning and I'm up and ready to go. Plan of action for today. Pretty much walk, pretty much meal, pack my kit bag. Those two will ch switch and change depending on how things go. A lot of games have been called off today, so that means we could get a bumper crowd, uh, which means we're in front of more people. So who knows about that? But for now, it's time to get this show on the road. And I'm very excited, actually. It's a late appointment. Everything is ready. I'm quite calm and ready to go, ready to referee. It's the first time I've refereed since New Year's Day, which was the 2nd of January for me. So I'm very much looking forward to getting back on the pitch. I lost the observer, so that's not a problem. So we go. Let's get this. So welcome to pre-match meals with John. This one's a good one, um, I promise. What I've started to do on a Friday night is make bigger meals with my family. So for example, we've got curry today. So it's like slow cooked beef curry with rice. It's half 12. So eating this kind of meal isn't too bad. I know... You know, I eat a lot of boring things like beans and stuff, but that is simply because trying to eat curry at half 10 when you're leaving at 11 o'clock is quite tough. And I don't, I only like to eat one meal. So, you know, I'm trying to be a little bit more exotic and a little bit more adventurous because you guys want to see it. So we've got curry today. It's half past 12 now. This is great. Plenty of protein. It's got potatoes in it because my dad really loves potatoes and curry. Beef and rice as well. So, uh, and a little bit of mango chutney. Uh, so this will keep me fueled up for today. Um, very much looking forward to it. And then after this, I'm going to pack my kit bag and sort some other bits of admin out as well. But I'll take you through that in a minute. So it's time to enjoy pre-match. We've got 40 minutes to go um, until we have to leave. Three and a half hours still, or two and a half hours still kick off. We're getting there. Pre-match meal done. We've had some developments in the game. My coach is now coming. My dad is now coming, which is nice. And my mates are coming because their games have all been called off. So we've got a nice little crowd for the referee. A little bit of admin before I uh, go into the ground is I like to put my uh, game sort of set up on the app already. So when I get to the ground, if there's like not as much signal, I can still access it on my watch. That's just a little tip. With that as well, make sure you bring a power bank, which is mine is in my car. So make sure you bring a power bank to make sure everything is charged. But this is all the kit that I am going to be bringing to a Nash an Ishmin League South Central game. So here it is. Starting off, kit bag. Well, there will be a new one soon, so keep an eye out in later vlogs. I'm quite excited for it. Wash bag, uh, crime sheets, and expenses cards, very important. Chewing gum, always comes as important. I don't, you know, everyone wants chewing gum, keeps your mouth fresh. Undershirt, I've got long sleeve and short sleeve. I don't know what I'm going into yet. Three pairs of match socks. Don't know why I've got three, but I just do. 
Two Nike, one True Sock, probably going to be the True Sock. Pair of match shorts. Kit bag for dirty kit. Spare boxes, gloves because it's freezing. Now, quick tip with gloves. I've got the ones with the sort of magic fingers at the end so I can still use my watch. These are great. They're from Tibisi, if I've spelled that wrong. Uh, anyway, box of tricks. So this is all my red and yellow cards. My berry hydration, because that's basically a cheap Lucasade and an isotonic just in case. I've realized that I'm only taking these if I really feel tired. Bottle of water. Sweets for the boys. We've got wine gum juices. Never had these before, but I'm giving them a good go. My buzzer flags. My nice clean boots. My speaker. Absolute monstrosity. Look at the size of this. Be great to listen to Olivia Rodrigo on that. Second pair of boots. Warm up stuff. Warm up stuff. And my match top back in this one today. So that's all the stuff that I'm bringing. I'm going to pack this up and then I will catch you at the ground. So, hot takes. That was hard. Seven Oaks went one the up in the first half. Very easy to manage, I thought, the game in terms of, you know, foul recognition. It was easy. My coach was there. He was quite happy with the first half. Second half, Lansing went 1-0, one 1-0 one really quickly from a free kick. Then they went 2-1 up really quickly and then 3-1 up in the 75th minute. So, you know, that caused a little bit of a stir. And then it, the game got gritty because... Seven Oaks then pushed forward um, and Lansing sat back and put everyone behind the ball and tried to count on the break. In terms of my stats, I haven't looked, so I'm very much looking forward to looking at them when I do my analysis session in a couple of days. Um, so overall, it was a tough game. I'm glad I got through it. It's one of those ones where you've got to grit out your chest. My coach seems happy, but I'll talk all about that in the analysis session. Um, but for now, I'm going to drive home, do my match return and prepare for tomorrow's game, which... It's Brighton and Hove Albion versus Everton, and you will see that in next week's vlog, so make sure you're tuning in for that. So I will see you in a few days for analysis. So, it's been a couple of days, uh, and we're looking through my refsic stats, but also we've got the footage as well. So I'm going to go through how we analyse, not necessarily the right or wrong decisions, but sometimes about process, and a lot of, at this level, being a level three, you know, you're in the top 5% uh, of referees in the country, so it's not about being always right, it's about making sure we're in the right positions at all times and looking for that extra 1% difference. So a lot of what we're going to be looking at is how to change process to make my refereeing easier. Um, and it's definitely something you can take into your games as well because with the right process, it enables you to have better management of the game uh, and better empathy for the game, which is something a lot of footballers and managers look for. They want you to be empathetic uh, for the game to get you know good results and let the game flow. But, as I said, I was excited to see my Refsic stats um, this week. And if we look at them, 11.38k, uh, which is one of the biggest of the season. Nice smile on my face. So if anyone has beaten that so far, let, it, let me know in the comments and I can see if I can beat it in my next game. Um, six kilometres in the second half, a massive second half, uh, which makes sense as well because, as I said, Seven Oaks really did try and knock the door down uh, in the second half. And it was very end-to-end -end in terms of counter-attacking football. Um, and that is also shown by the sprint map here. So if I look at it, first half, not too many sprints, well, quite a few sprints, but the second half, a lot more sprints and four red ones as well. So if anyone can top that, let me know. One of the great things, obviously, about Ref6 and being on the app is that I can go up here and look at the video replay tool and I select my file. And as you can see, I've got plenty of fixtures coming up for you as well. So be ready for the next couple of vlogs. And then I have this here which is obviously all synced up from the game. So I can look at the key areas of the game. So for me, the key areas are goals and yellow cards and any misconduct that happens. There are no red cards in this game, which is fine. So if we look at the first goal, um, we can see my position here because the camera angle doesn't see me. So I can see I'm in quite a central position here. And I know a lot of the talk is about me getting wide. And if I pause it here already, I can see that this little red dot down here shows me in the middle of sort of the edge of the deep. Why am I here? Um, I have to be asking myself. My assistant has most of this covered. 
uh, down in this corner. Um, in my personal opinion, and probably my coach's opinion as well, I should be up more around here in this area of the corner because if the cross comes in, I'm ready to see any pushes and pulls, um, as well as if a shot comes in from where this player is now, um, if it rebounds or ricochets, it's going to come straight at me. Um, and that's not very good at all because I'll be getting in the way. And if I get hit by the ball, defenders are going to be unhappy. Attackers are especially going to be unhappy because I've basically stopped their attack. So we have to be ready for this as well. So moving it forward, again, we can see this little red dot still very central and the cross comes in. I've been very lucky that I've managed to not get hit by the ball. And again, we're pausing it here again. Look how central I am. That's not where we want to be. We want to be wide. We want to have this exit left strategy. And that's really important when refereeing. If you feel like you're stuck in the middle of the park, always think exit left, um, because that means you're keeping the ball between you and your assistant and you're enabling yourself to have a lot more room. First yellow card. Now, this is a strange yellow card, C2, which is obviously descent. At my level, it doesn't have a sim bin. Um, we don't have sim bin, so it's just a straight yellow card. Process with a sim bin or a yellow card. Have you questions to ask? Set them up because it's not just about the battle between you and the player. It's about have you told the captain to try and calm him down? Does everybody in the crowd know that you're about to yellow card him for simbin? And in this case, we can probably say no. So if we watch what happens, it comes from a, a simple foul, and that's quite simple. Really, is here's the foul. And he's shouting at me here. You can see me having a, a quick word and he's then faffing about with the ball. And then here you can see he said something. I'm now not happy. I was having this battle with this player for quite some time. It's the 53rd minute. Do I bring him in here and have a public word and tell him enough is enough? Do I caution him for dissent? Do I get the captain in? These approaches are something that we need to, to use in our armory because as you can see, what I've done here is we've got very emotional and I've used my emotions to caution the player when maybe bringing the captain in could have calmed everyone down and given me more time. Whereas what I've done is I've not snapped, but I've definitely raised my profile by doing this. And that's something we need to really think about, about process. Can I bring the captain in and work with me is one of the key things. And we talk about man management a lot in these vlogs. Um, and here is a bad example of what you know, we're not looking for in those, in those scenarios. So for my learnings are, you know, make, bring the captain in, set him up better, and give him not an extra chance per se, but give him a chance to calm down and show the players that I can work with them. The final challenge of the game is this tackle here. And um, one of the le key learnings from this tackle is my emotions. Something that's been brought up a lot. So if we watch the clip through, there's an easy sort of tackle. Here it comes. They're battling, they're battling. It just gets a little bit out of hand and he's clipped him through. Easy, I've got the player straight away, but what I'm doing now, as you can see, I've already told a player I'm dealing with it, and you can see me quite frustrated. I'm trying to call the player in. I've got another now player in my face telling me it's a yellow card, so they've not even given me the chance to caution them. And it's me getting a little bit frustrated. You can see me getting a little bit more agitated. Go away. Um, quite angry there. If we keep rolling on through, I've called him over, but I am keep walking with him, bringing out the yellow card. And here we go, two players here, which one have I cautioned? You know, from the clip, it looks like I've cautioned the little player, I think it's the 12, I've actually cautioned the big number two. That's not a good process. What we should be doing is isolating the player, making sure that he's alone, never leave a, let a player get away angry, and then show the yellow card. Because at the moment, if an assessor was there, or if anyone in the crowd doing Twitter asked who I've cautioned, you're probably going to think it's that smaller player rather than the big player and that's not good process i've gone in angry not necessarily angry but i've gone in with a raised profile and we can't really have that because again it's showed this emotion and it shows no process so that's obviously what we've done by going through the the stats as well it's about these all yellow cards are spot on yellow cards i've got them right i've got the process wrong but it's about you know finding those little bits and pieces in the footage that allow me to move on better and if that's a recurring theme in all my yellow cards, then I need to sit down with my coach and find a better process. So a lot of this is emotional this week. The game was tough. I raised my profile with the game a little bit too high. And it's about how can I 
take a step back, breathe, find a mental zone where I'm in control and the, not the game's in control. And that's what we have to look at. And if anyone's got any sort of tips about how to stay calm, let me know in the comments because it is something that I'm heavily working on. Um, but overall, it was a great game. I think I did well. Like I said, I've got all the other cards correctly, but there are little bits that we can tweak in terms of positioning from dead ball situations and open play and process when it comes to yellow cards. Um, so luckily, we've got footage for the next couple of games, especially when it comes to middle. So if there's anything you want to see me analyse in the footage, let me know in the comments. Um, but if you want to have a look at this replay tool, click the link in our description and uh, head over to Pro. And then you can get this, anyone can get this if they go on Pro as well. And I would recommend that you use it because it really does help find those little bits in your performance that can definitely step up the next level. But that has been this week's weekly vlog. Please like and subscribe and I will see you guys at the next Ref6 weekly vlog.